So you can see here, we've drawn the basic map where the facial features need to uh, be placed uh, for, for proper proportion. But the, the manner in which features are drawn at this point, we're doing as example and in no way uh, reflect the actual features that will wind up be wind up uh, <coughs> needing to be drawn for the um, for the actual rendering itself. Um, you might be using your phone to draw from. I decided to print an image out. I, I don't like the phone clicking off. And uh, the one thing the phone does provide is an ability to to zoom in on features. And so I did actually enlarge and print some of the features uh, separately so that I can kind of look at them a little more closely for detail um, because at this point our goal is, with the drawing is to try to get it pushed forward um, with the fe features becoming more close to uh, what they actually look like. One of the things I want you to think about as you move forward with features is to, if we're looking at the eyes, and in this case we'll look a little more closely with these, these zoomed in uh, versions, but the eyes have these kind of angular suggestions. The actual shape of your eye is often more or, or easier to interpret if you start to think of it in terms of angles um, and, and less in terms of uh, rounded shapes because your your mind kind of has the idea oh an eye looks like this you know uh, and and that's really not what what an eye looks like at all um, in fact we can see the in this case the um, the eyelid kind of overlaps the uh, some of the structure. Yeah, the eye the eye actually um, uh, opens and closes to a degree to control uh, light. So we wind up, you know, I'm thinking in terms of the outline of the eye here and kind of defining it. There's some eyelashes and things I'm just going to ignore to start out. But what we get kind of this uh, if we if we approach it more. Or less as angles, then we oftentimes can get uh, a little more accuracy in terms of interpreting the the um, the information that that's actually there um, regarding the the eye. <clears throat> um, so so you know just in general, as I go to to sketch in the the features i will be kind of looking more or less to to do a little bit of angular approach um these the general mapped in placement of things remember is based on the notion that there are you know for a particular face there there are you know measurements and proportions that hold true throughout all human faces and so our, our uh, our goal using the, 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 this underdrawing is to make sure we've got things spaced uh, where they need to be um, for our drawing. Now you can see my mouth, I put lips on this one. You're really not seeing any lips on, on my mouth. Uh, it's kind of just the slit here. You see a mustache, you see a uh, other facial hair, but, but uh, you don't really see these, these articulated lips or anything like on the initial sketch. Um, the shape of the mouth, you know, it, it it runs fairly flat, but maybe even angled up to the left, just slightly, potentially. That might be a function of light, but, but in reality, what we're going to see mostly is, is this kind of upward, uh, slightly upward tilt, but we're really not going to see. I did knock back. There was a lot of notations and things that, in, in the different grid lines that, that I've tried to kind of knock knock back um, as I push forward. And so, you know, trying to erase some of the switched over. This isn't a needed eraser. It's a, it, it, it's a, a different, uh, it's a 
just a, a, a white eraser that, that sometimes is a little more aggressive at pulling some of that stuff off that, that I don't want there. The width, the width of the mouth here, you know, it does kind of correspond with the with the center of the eyes, but, but we lose a lot of the um, we lose a lot of the definition of it to to beard hairs and such. Uh, when, when we look at the up close uh, image. But not a whole lot of articulation there. Just this kind of uh, facial hair that happens here and, and even up to here. Um, so we kind of reduce that closer to what we see over here at this point. Um, drawing in a lot of the facial hair. Hair is its own type of challenge as we, as we go to try to get the drawing a little more refined. Um, different versions of hair here. I, obviously, I don't get any on, the, any on the top of my head, but I think dealing with hair as shapes is, is really a big strategy. Not trying to draw individual hairs, but really deal with kind of generalized shapes and then add maybe some detail to that. The, the, the uh, contours, you know, the edges and things, those are, are pretty important. But here, if you're not trying to draw a line for each hair, you're drawing more or less dark shapes uh, and, and a few lighter shapes in between here is a little more high contrast, but with with the um, With the hair, you know, we'll take kind of that with the beard hair. We'll take kind of that same approach I'm not going to try to draw each single hair um, As I move forward the nose is is a pretty um, Important thing to consider uh, again, we're trying to avoid the kind of cartoon imagery we may have um, been accustomed to seeing over time for how a nose might get articulated. But here we can see the there's edges of the nose. They're soft. The nose actually transitions very softly into the face. So the, the types of shapes that we wind up uh, seeing in a nose are, are much different than than what we think of oftentimes you know with cartoons there's kind of hard edges that are drawn for us you know maybe we're just going to begin articulating you know some of the um the nostril shape and um but at this point we're not really trying to lock in we're not going to get very dark and one of the things we're trying to do is um you know maybe a little bit of value and a little bit of just line for where things need to be um, be placed, here's kind of the edge of the the nose there, and this this side your transitions. But there's not going to be a real hard hard um, hard line there, and even this part you can see kind of uh, transitions out into kind of a soft version of value. There is. A dominant area of kind of shadow on the underside of the nose here that will uh, wind up being articulated as the drawing moves forward. And we can erase some of that. Some of this is from the initial uh, just kind of model sketch here. One of the things that we can see if we look at the the difference. Um, we can we can start to articulate also this there's a cast shadow created by the nose and so that might be something that I think is worth kind of starting to as I get more of the detail of this uh, this thing roughed in at this point that is part of the the features that that, that will be kind of dominating the the drawing as I move forward. Um, so we got the, the kind of basic uh, articulation, maybe closer to what the nose shape might actually look like. I might put a little more value in just because the nose really does uh, become such a significant um, part of the uh, description of the face. The eyes also extremely, extremely important. As visual aspects this this eye over here like I like I said before you know starting to articulate 
you know, the reality, it's not a wide open eye by any means. Um, just starting to kind of articulate the, the actual shapes that are, that are there. The fact that the eye is dominated, you know, there's a, a large extent of it that's underneath the eyelid down there. So, so we get kind of a rounded uh, part of it here that is more or less kind of an upward curve there. For this other eye here, let's pull that one out of the way. The other eye here, much darker, it's in the shadow side of things, but again, not really wide open. You're really defining these, these curves here. As I try to get the general shape of it by the by the time you know we get into all the value study, uh, we'll we'll lose a lot of these initial kind of map lines that are mapping it out. Some of these shapes are helping me just try to initially differentiate, but may, maybe we'll um, lose uh, some of their emphasis as we go forward. Also important to the eyes, obviously, are the, the eyebrows, and we can see some of the irregular shape to the eyebrow and really how close the eyebrow might get to the eyeball at this point. So kind of drawing out the some of the shape of the eyebrow if it's if it's a bit wider it looks like this eyebrow kind of uh, comes over and even connects with some some shadow that that kind of extends upwards there again these are kind of initial sketches trying to make this thing look uh, individualistic uh, now that we've got kind of the general placement of where features need to be uh, in place. Um, also, maybe I would note the, uh, the shadow pattern here, kind of a major diagonal line that's going to become an important part of this. And the shadow extends down, goes kind of runs up that side, over and down that side. So that would be part of what I would be kind of initially kind of sketching in some of the placement of these different these different uh, parts of the value patterns and sh light shadow for for this drawing you know you 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 are drawing the specific features you're also working on you know, the, the light and shadow play that goes on. So you're kind of really looking for how, how does this area function? There's a pretty dramatic, important line there. It kind of connects with the, what would be a line of the nose. Kind of has a diagonal take to it. All these little bits of information are going to be uh, extremely important as we work to get this thing more and more realistic. There's a bit of a shadow happening right there. My eye does, you know, my focus does tend to jump around a little bit. There's a bit of a shadow moment happening over here as I get these initial, the initial kind of informational aspects. Uh, articulated in into this thing.
jelly shutter that kind of runs along right there. We're really just looking for any information. We got this little little curve moment. We got shadow that runs up this side of the eye here. We got a major little divot, you know, happening right here above the eye. Down here, you know, maybe we start to well, one thing that you know I'm drawn to I, I, I didn't put any of this uh, kind of information of this the upper eyelid here some of that information becomes extremely important the fact that that line extends down below the eyeball over here Kind of ends right there. All this becomes crucial. The well, the overall shape here. You know, looking at the fact that here we can see the the this kind of winds up, then it kind of turns in right here. That's that's an important bit of uh, information that will start to define kind of the shape of the jawline, which becomes very very important to this um, obviously it will be fuzzy as it continues on same thing on this side there is kind of a, a moment where that kind of turns in and then heads, heads down and then over a bit but is you know kind of I'll just leave the suggestion of the roughness of the the beard there under this uh, this corner of the eye we or the corner of the mouth here we can see you know there's quite a bit of a dark shape we can start to you know give some uh, definition to at least with the this initial part of the drawing that may go over a little too far I'll make a little edit there on this side there's quite a bit of shadow stuff happening over here that needs to be um, part of this initial there's there's a crease up here There's one over here. A little scar. There's, there's the. Um, and we had the head, kind of turning in here a little bit, and back out. And over and up. And by no means do I feel confident as I um, start to place all these things. I'm just kind of beginning to try to give some description to what um, what types of things are there at this stage in the drawing. It's really uh, I am committed, or not, I know enough to know that, that this drawing will. Um, go through quite a bit of change as it moves forward. I'm looking at these little value shapes and so forth. What's going to be happening? I'm trying to get the um, the individual nature of these different features and so forth. Much of this is just contour line that I'll probably uh, or definitely be going back to with, with, with a much more uh, dramatic use of value. But I'm, I am trying to give myself little um, 
clues about where where things are placed, where what what type of stuff are, is there that needs to be um, depicted. It's getting much closer uh, uh, to to how uh, it may may appear in the end um, <clears throat> as we get more and more of this information. The, the ears, I guess, are 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 pretty significant, and that we just don't see much of them. A little bit of uh, ear over here, and then it just kind of disappears behind the. And in a drawing, every little bit of information becomes significant, particularly when you're trying to get a likeness in a portrait. The the difference between a good likeness and and, and an unsuccessful likeness is just the slightest of. Uh, details that that's all, that almost uh, are imperceptible until you you somehow figure out and get them get them just right. Uh, definitely, kind of starting to note where highlights are going to be. There's definitely a highlight that happens right here. Right there is a little highlight. Down here is a little moment of of highlight. Light is coming from this side, so I start to notice it a little more. This one, there's a major reflection on the head uh, that that'll happen right there. But at this point, you know, some of that's going to get redefined as as we go. Job at this point is just kind of making things uh, up here somewhat similar to what what the final just really just placing information and a lot of times in a drawing you're placing information and it's something to respond to it may not be right exactly right but will become something you can come back to and fix uh, but if you don't get the initial kind of marks it's not nearly far enough if you don't get the initial marks uh, down, you, you'll have nothing to respond to. So at this point, you're just starting to gather, gather information uh, to see, see how well you have it organized. You got the features roughly in the right, in the right uh, spot based on the canon of proportions. Now you're trying to tweak them, look for the reality of. The information there's actually a little shadow right here these are little depressions based on uh, where my glasses were right before I took them off um, quite a bit going on right here with the, the eye your eyes sit back in orbitals in your skull and so they uh, they wind up often being very much in shadow and as we move forward it's it's more and more significant to to recognize that we often think of the white of the eye uh, you know as being an area where white will occur and in fact it's likely not to occur uh, the white of the eye because the eyes sit back in orbitals is often a uh, a darker um, maybe a light tone but a darker light tone So mostly working in contour line at this point, just kind of putting down descriptions of information that, that will define where value shapes are and so forth as we, as we move forward and can, can see kind of the difference between the two things here. Not real convinced on the exactness of the shapes in my eye so far. They look like they're even a little size a little different but like I said that's okay at this point you know just getting down the initial kind of map of things so we can move to the to the next stage we we have to to, to hold to this idea that the drawing is a process uh, the drawing won't be finished right when you start it 
and we have to allow things to kind of constantly remain in flux throughout the process of it. Uh, things are going to shift around in placement and uh, very important here is the cast shadow that comes here. It kind of runs up through the shirt and down and we even see the shadow kind of defined over here. There's a little bit of a fold in the shirt that creates a little shadow over there. Yeah, so I'm not real married to the jaw line so much at this point. But I feel like I'm getting a lot of the descriptive information kind of somewhat articulated. The edge of the beard kind of runs over here and up there like that. That's good information. Some of the white hairs of the beard there. And the highlight runs right about there for the nose. This area is all very much in shadow. So your job is to begin to do this, to, to look for the information of the drawing you know, the particular shapes of your eye, uh, you know, and that angular approach is, is extremely important. You know, the, this, you know, reality of the mouth, if I define it in angles, does it become to be, does it start to take on a more accurate description? Certainly we brought the drawing much further along at this point from where where it began <clears throat> but we still uh have a long way to go but that the idea that this drawing is is a process and that you will after mapping in some of this stuff you'll you'll be returning to it with other steps in the process and that you will be making changes. This is not locked in place. And you'll retain all the, the reality of the, um, the reference images and your ability to, to use those reference images to make changes uh, and, and correct and resize, re-establish re angles. That's very important. So we got more information here. We've pushed things forward and uh, at this point, we can feel good about kind of moving to our next step.